All right, let's go over crude real quick. I want to make sure we understand how to trade these markets with our uh, with our top trend filter. Let's go over after crude oil inventories yesterday. We had some nice little uh, uh, movement after inventories. Inventories came out at 10.30 right here yesterday. 10.30, today's price action is right now. We're flat sideways. I'll go over that in a second as we speak. So you'll notice we've had, we had a move up right after inventories. We had a big move up at 10.30 when crude oil inventories were released. We had a buy signal here where the arrows are at. Came all the way up. We had the sell signal that came in, and it kept on a sell side all the way down. We had a buy signal here, and it kept the buy signal all the way up. We did have one arrow that fired here, and that was high value area market profile. Actually went down uh, right around 30 ticks, 30 tick move down. But you can tell it was a buy signal all the way up. And then we had a transition at this level. Right on that bar, that's your next transition point. I'm going to show you how to do the transitions. I did a video on this yesterday, but it's important you know how to do this because you can stay on the right side of the market. really helps you trading out. So if I look from inventories yesterday, inventories come out every Wednesday at 1030. We only had a few transitions in the market. One. According to my trend filter, two, three, and four. And you want to trade all markets like this. All right? So that's the only transitions we had yesterday after crude oil inventories. Now, the easy way to do it is this. When you see, let's look at the buy signal at 11 had a huge buy signal went from 50 all the way up for a 110 tick move at 11 o'clock let's look at the buy signal I have a smaller MA a smaller MA we don't use moving averages for support and resistance we don't use them for crossovers we use them for trend direction off my trend filter this is the trend filter it's a 9 sim Rinko trend filter the 9 sim Rinko is our trend filter and our trade bias. We've got to understand that this chart will really help us get on the right side of the market. It doesn't matter what market you trade. Had some big moves on the NASDAQ futures yesterday and also gold. Gold with big bias up. Caught the downtrend also. All right, so how do we do it? Let's get these back off. I'm going to show you how we how we get our trend bias once we have our trend bias once we establish if we're a net buyer or net seller if they're trying to mark the market up or they're trying to mark the market down if we're in a trend then we can trade off our five and three Simrinko arrows so once we establish trend once the bias is known first you find the bias I'll show you how to do that in a sec Find the trend bias off of the 9 sim, this chart right here. Number two is what you're going to do is you are going to then look for retracements, retracement arrows off the 5 and 3 sim Rico with bias so that's what you're going to do every day and the way you look for the five you use the symmetry dots for the five for placement and you wait till the symmetry dots are broken for the three to jump in the three and I did videos on those before you can check those out but you don't want to trade arrows in flat markets you want to wait till you establish a trend and then you want to jump on them So that's what we want to do.
We want to nine sims our trend filter. Find the trend bias off the nine sim. Look for retracement arrows off the five and three sim Rico with bias. All right. So how do we do it? I have when news was released yesterday. We had a buy signal. How? I have a real small MA right here that really works well with my Rinko bar because my Rinko bar has a trend filter built into it. It's not like a lot of Rinko bars. Very, very different. Now what happens is it catches really nice, uh, gives you a heads up on big trends. The best way to look, look for a movement is this. We'll take a look at this cell right here. Pull it up a little bit. How do we know to look for a cell bias on cell signals off the 5 and 3 sim Rinko bar with arrows all the way down? And how do we look for buy arrows all the way up for 110 plus ticks potential? Let's look at the cell arrow first. The best thing to do is, let me take these arrows off of here. Your first transition happened when 50% of this candle meaning the open versus close. The open versus close is the dark, I mean, is the uh, red box or the green box. So the red box, meaning the close is lower than the open, and it turns red. If 50% of that candle, I don't even mean the wicks, the high and the low, if 50% of that candle closes on that small MA, 50% of it, you know you possibly have a transition. When 90% closes below it, you know you have a possible trend in place. Start watching your 5 and 3 sim for retracement trades right here. Now, the weakest part of the market is going to be when you get below all three MAs. This is the sweetest spot in the market right here. That's going to be where you must let the runner run. There'll be days where it'll keep on that side of the market and it'll keep going and going and going. Sweetest part of the market when they mark the market up is here. And this transition up to here. That's going to be your biggest legs in the market because you're below all three MAs and you're above all three MAs. The nice trade you're going to look for is once you get in that transition, 50% of the candle and 90%, when you start seeing space away from all three MAs like this, space, space, you're in a hard trend up. There's a retracement. Once it turns red, those are counter trend traders, novice traders coming back down. You'll notice we did not close 50% candle or 90% candle, so it wasn't a trend change. It was just a pullback. We had an arrow buy right here at the low on the 5 and 3 sim. We had an arrow buy here on the 3 sim. We had an arrow buy down here on the 3 sim. So these are buy points off my arrows because you're with the 9 sim trend. But you can tell these pullbacks, these wicks here that pull back to my smaller MA, those are your opportunities off the off the arrows to pop in the market. On the downside, the same way, we had an arrow sell here. Right when we closed, right below all three MAs, had a beautiful arrow sell there. We had a beautiful arrow sell here. So you want to trade the five and the three sim arrows. The sweetest spot in the market to trade them is when you're below all three MAs and you have space are these wicks, these wicks that come back up and touch. We had a buy right here also. So you had two, two chances to short right there, four chances to buy on the way up. Here we had an arrow long after news. So with crude oil inventories, we had two of them, we had an arrow long there, arrow long here in direction of the nine. So you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shots to go long and short after crude oil inventories, all with nine sim direction and all with five and three sim arrows.
And how you do it is, is like I said, the sweetest spot in the market is going to be right here when you blow all three. And typically, you'll get a buy signal right when you close blow all three and retest it. You typically get a signal right at this arrow, right at this arrow. This, this is the sweetest spot I like to get in when we're trending. It'll close above all three or below all three. And this spot right here, I can find the biggest inflection point typically on any given market on any given day. Right there. That close above all three when you're already in trend above the small MA. That's going to be your sweetest spot because you're hard trending down already. Once you close below all three, you really get rolling. This is a really good spot for you guys to pay attention to. Right there. Got the big short and it got the, the, the big massive long. You can still take retracements here, 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 here with arrows. But once you're below all three and above all three, you're with the overall trend of the market. All right? That pullback right there is a beautiful arrow. That's a beautiful arrow sell there that happens all the time on any given market. So let's go to the scope before we shut this video off. And it works on NASDAQ futures. It works on the Dow, the S&P, the DAX. It works the same way, guys and gals. It all works the same way. It's not like it works, it, it doesn't work in, it works just in one market. It works in all markets the same way. All right, so we want to be in 9 sim trend direction. Just remember, you want to see space. You want to see space between the smaller MA because it's telling you they're marking the market up. That wick retracement, you better fire in the 5 or 3. All right, if I look at yet the day before, same thing. We only had a couple transitions. Look at this transition buy. Absolutely massive the day before. Massive move. So if I'm a buyer, there's my 50% candle down here. There's 90% that says we're in a possible trend. Here's a great long right there on that wick. That is a great long because we just closed above all three. The first retracement was right there with a 5 and 3 sim arrow with 9 sim tr trend. And that provided us a great launching point with a low risk trade with a high probability for a massive move. Right there. Then we had other opportunities. Arrows fired here. Here's a transition down. This is the first close below it. The arrow actually caught it right here. Oops. Close below all three is a sweet spot. Remember when I tell you that. Right there, caught the sweet spot. Here, caught the arrow. It actually had two arrows that fired in a row. Here, caught the arrow. Why? You're in a nine sim trend down. Let's go the day before. Transition. We're in a downtrend. The transition, when you're down, the biggest one it caught on this huge, massive move down right here was right at this retest. Look at the wick. It closed below all three. You've got to watch for this. When it closed below all three, that's typically going to be your sweetest spot in the market to get short along on any given market if you're already below my smallest MA. So that provided us a great launching point right there for another big short. That's the arrows fired. Okay, so that works in all markets. It doesn't matter what market it is. Look for your transitions like that. Really neat way to do it. Easy way to do it. And um, it allows us to get into these trades with high probability setups. Make sure you look for that 50, 90% candle and then wick pullbacks. Okay, that is the best way to look for this. If I've traded the NASDAQ futures this morning, for instance, let's look at what's going on in the NASDAQ futures this morning and Jerry shut this off. So let's say I'm trading another market. 
And I'm looking at the NASDAQ futures. All right, let me show you here. Same exact scenario. Does not matter. You want to stay on the side of the trend. Stay on the side of the trend. Because that way you're not fighting the tape. If they're going to mark the market up or mark the market down, you're actually going to be with the push. We want to be with the push. So if I look at the NASDAQ futures this morning, my buy signal right here has started it. Just recently, it says 6.30 this morning. Let's see what I'm at. Right there's your 90% candle. There's your 50%. And it's been a buy bias all the way up. We had our arrows fire here. Arrows fire here. Arrows fire here. Oops. Here. All the trend bias. This starts it out right here. Started it out this morning. Then we got the move up. Okay, so 